Hey guys, we are going to talk about some interesting cards that have been going up in price. These tend to be more casual and not a four of an eternal deck of some type. So Bloodline Keeper, this one was super obvious. It fell down to $2.50 during, looks like M14 was the all-time low. But even before then, it after it rotated from Innistrad, it never really saw that much play. In Limited, it was a bomb, but in Constructed, or it was just not good. So Bloodline Keeper is one of the best vampires in my opinion because it creates vampire tokens. And it also flips into a vampire lord. But mainly I use him to create tokens. Having 2-2 two, two black being able to tap it to create a 2-2 black flying vampire token is extremely, extremely good. And guess what is coming back, guys? We are going to see Vampire Tribal. Vampires have always been a popular tribe, but it doesn't hurt that one of the new commander decks is Vampires. Now, the next card we're going to talk about is Wizard Tribal. This card was absolute junk, and now it is $5. What made it so bad in the past was you needed wizards and it's very difficult to accumulate enough of them for this to be valuable. Uh, now it's very, very good in EDH because you can copy multiple times as long as you have two wizards a time. It itself is a wizard, so you could tap it as well. One double blue for a 2-2, two, two. one in a blue, tap two untapped wizards you control, copy target instant or sorcery spell, you may choose new targets for the copy. So obviously, if you can copy a copy a copy and your copies are untapping your wizards and you get to the maximal amount of wizards you need to win the game, need I say more? I mean, you are in blue and wizards is, the wizards have got lost stronger. They're not like two twos and one ones now. Like some of them are four fives. I was like, wow, that's a pretty big size for a wizard. I feel like because they added other colors, they have experimented with the power and toughness level, which is relevant. Now, Lodestone Bobble uh, has continued to increase in price. I'm not sure if people are doing this as a Norwell joke or they don't realize it's actually not amazing. It's not the other Bobbles. What makes the other Bobbles so good is they don't cost anything to activate. This costs one, and you might be like, oh, that's not a big deal. But it is a big deal. The bobbles have been doing exceedingly well. I don't, the other bobbles, I don't see them going to, I mean, Ursus Bobble, there's a, a ton of these. Like you can find them in bulk at your local game store even today. Mishra's Bobble is a known quantity. It's 14, 15, 16, $20 at one time. And unless it's reprinted, which I hope happens soon. And I will say I have multiple copies of Mishra's Bobble. And I like them. I used them in every deck. I used them before they became popular. You can go on the channel and see that I was using them to activate Tamagoyf before people were using it to activate Tamagoyf. Actually, most people were using it to activate Delve, and that's why it first spiked up in price. But I was like, oh, hey, it's really hard to get an artifact in play. This does it. Now, Dragon Lord Dromoka. And let me just say that all the Dragon Lords are good speculations right now because they're big they're dragony and you can make them cheaper and they come down and play fast and they hit really hard dragon lord dromoka is an example right there's four more i think all four are viable but if i were to pick one i would pick the dragon lord dromoka as the most because uh, he's very unique um he has the flying he has the life link opponents can't play spells during your turn which is fantastic and he's a 5-7, so you cannot get blown out by instant speed removal, which, if you're dragons, I, I would be concerned about that. That would be my, one of my primary concerns. Okay, I'm going to tackle all these flying big dragon creatures. Am I going to get blown out at instant speed? And the answer, if you play Dragon Lord, Jomokra is no. And you can play him when you want to alpha strike. So he is very flexible and incredibly strong. He does a lot of good stuff, and he can't be countered. So the blue player who's trying to, um, so it, it's difficult to deal with him if you have enough to kill on the board. Uh, now I will talk about Falia in greater detail. A lot of you don't believe me when I thought, said that I was buying these for $2 and I'm going to make a separate video where I screenshot the TCG player stuff at the lowest 
Now I did buy them at $3, at 4 at 5 Then I stopped buying them at 5 and that was it. Uh, I pretty much rode the... I sort of continued to buy them, but I was also buying Malera's at the time, and Malera actually, for a very brief moment in time, was more than Philea. Why? How did I know this card? It's a $13 plus card, $13.55. Uh, how did I know this card was good? I played Magic for a long time. The only thing I really care about is one and two drops. Occasionally free drops like Lily of the Veil, but one and two drops are more played than anything else by definition because they're one and two drops. But especially in the older formats where everything is just powered up more. So let's say I'm a cat as a really cool card like Chandra Torch of Defiance. It's a four drop. Not likely to see much play, because is it as good as Jace, which is obviously banned? No. Therefore, you for a four drop, you have to be very good. For one or two drop, you just have to be decent, because you might see play. All right, so here's the story, um, and this is a story from a YouTuber. And I watched one of his videos, and he was saying that he had purchased a lot of Star City bulk, and this was the definition of bulk. And he purchased, let's say, 10,000 bulk cards. And out of the 10,000, they gave him 1,000 copies of this card, which at the time was bulk. And he was complaining about it, actually, because he was like, oh, well, they didn't give me like a diverse array of it. I don't know if the number is so a number of 1,000. I'm, I'm just taking that out of nowhere. But I know that he purchased a lot of bulk. And, he, and one of the cards he complained about having too many copies of was this card. This is where legends, MTG Finance legends, are made of. And it's mostly luck, right? Mostly luck. It's not skill. It is luck. So when you, you can buy bulk cards, and here's a cat. Star City Games gets to choose what bulk they give you. And at the time, Phyrexian Unlife was the bulk card they gave this YouTuber. I hope he kept I hope he kept it because it's a $10 card now. He had a thousand one. If he had a thousand of them, they would be $10,000. And buy listing, let's say you can buy list for four. Let's say you buy list it for two and a half. That's very, very good. I think people would definitely buy it at that. I would buy it at $250 uh, for a $10 card. Yeah. Um, he would have made $250 times uh, 10000 or 1000 Not bad. $2,500. bucks. 25 Yeah, 2500 bucks. Next, uh, Riptide Laboratory. I'm going to talk about the foil. Uh, clearly, Wizards is very good. The foil of these, I mean, this is kind of what the old school foils mean to me. Like, Onslaught is surprisingly, I would consider old school now. Any of these foils, if the card gains a little bit of popularity, the foil price will spike through the moon, right? It will just go, whew, and to $64. And next, Coastal Piracy. This is the same scenario. I'm not talking about the regular one, which is $4. I'm going to talk about the foil, which is almost $30. One gamble that you can make is if you like an old school Mercadian Mask, Onslaughter, Nemesis, Urza's Saga, no, not Urza's Saga, Urza's Destiny, Urza's Legacy, Urza's blah, blah, blah. Well, I think that's all of the Urza's. If you like any of these older... Apocalypse, buy them in the foil, because if they take off, if you're right about it, and they take off, I, I don't want a multiplier of, you know, from bulk to $4, I want a multiplier from bulk to $30. And the difference between Coastal Privacy, regular and non-foil, I think was very, not that much, maybe a multiplier of two at the time, but obviously now the multiplier is insane, and it's a $30 foil. Not the best card. I think Trident is better in almost every case, but Trident was there's too many Tridents out there. And anyway, uh, it's uh the Trident from uh Foster's Trident is the one I'm talking about. Anyway, bye guys.